Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. So the theme that we have going today is one of, well, it's we're going to start with water, water everywhere. So we're starting over here with floods killing 72, displacing 210,000 people. 210,000 people, almost a quarter of a million people are displaced across Kenya as dams are reaching their dangerous levels. So we are seeing floods here, floods there, and floods everywhere. And you guys are dreaming of floods. You are seeing visions of tsunamis. And really the theme that I'm getting from you guys and what you're sharing in your comments, what you're sharing in your emails to me, um, it's it's water you know and it's water of biblical proportions so poor kenya is suffering through these floods and um it's just crazy you know so we have like biblical type floods going on in so many different areas more than six thousand livestock killed houses destroyed damaged infrastructure roads health facilities all damaged Two major dams um, are both reaching dangerously high levels. And if the rain continues, they're going to be forced to release water from the dams, which could make things even worse. But of course, hopefully better than if the, flood, if the dams actually give. So we also have floods and landslides, leaving at least 18 dead in Rwanda. And we have severe weather and flash floods hitting Israel and Palestine as well. And uh, we could see some pretty big size hail there as well. So at least 12 people injured where the hailstorm just came down and major flooding. So we are definitely getting hit with it, my friends. And so many of you said this just feels like there's this great foreboding building of energy coming before the big storm releases. Well, the big storm is releasing in a lot of areas already. New national 24-hour rainfall record potentially set in Hawaii. And there is a Jeep floating away. And... Uh, just incredible. We had covered some of the record rainfall that they've been having over there uh, earlier. You know, a couple weeks ago we were talking about this. And uh, so it's certified <clears throat> the latest total will break the U.S. 24-hour record of 43 inches measured at Alvin, Texas back in 1979. And also set the state of Hawaii record of 38 inches back in 56 so we're seeing records of all kinds falling around the globe so you know is this normal is this just another typical little cycle obviously the answer is no yeah we're into uncharted territory for us in our lifetimes without a doubt and maybe uncharted territory for humanity in the past six thousand or so years of its civilization or perhaps going back to that 12,900 year ago time frame. Western Europe experiencing rise of winter wave heights and extreme storms. Yeah, I remember when we were showing you those houses falling in the cliffs and, and some people said, well, you know, people build houses too close to the water and they're going to fall on the cliffs. And that's true. But with the changes that we're having going on, we're going to be seeing these type of things in even in areas that we would have thought were relatively safe. So we're going to be noticing these things expanding. Manhattan is actually building a massive $1 billion wall and park to guard against the next inevitable superstorm. So pretty interesting. And so this is an artist rendering of an east side coastal resiliency project. So they're preparing for the next big one after Hurricane Sandy hit. And Sandy did $19 billion in damage to New York City. And, uh, you know, as, as we have said, it's really just a matter of time. You know, it's, it's not that we want to harp on the negative, but we need to face the facts and, and 
make wise decisions. So with everything that's going on, perhaps there are some areas that we're better to be not investing in, not investing our time, our money, or our effort, and looking to other areas. And for sure, you know, as far as shifting attention, we need to shift money away from, as I've been saying, you know, all the military expenditures and things along those lines, because it really feels like it's all about just making money for the military industrial complex and the pharmaceutical agencies and the bankers, you know, when we have really pressing things coming upon humanity as a whole. So we know there's been a lot of swarming going out west, and we have a 3.9 quake, the second of the day, shaking San Diego County. And uh, the area around Palm Springs is due for massive quake. That's just, you know, kind of fact. So it, it would destroy homes and split the freeway in three places, but few homeowners have earthquake insurance. So be aware. I mean, the whole West Coast, as we've been saying, be aware. Oklahoma suffers its 2,724th earthquake since 2010. And, you know, Oklahoma is not really a fault zone, so it is completely due to fracking. And, and some of it's pressure coming in from other areas, but really it's, it's all about the fracking. And can we believe how short-sighted our politicians are and, and these companies that do this to the planet? Because this is just making the inevitable large earthquakes that are coming going to have so much more effect and impact on areas that would have otherwise been relatively unscathed. So it's truly just madness. It really is. It's complete madness because all we're doing is amplifying the effects of the earth changes coming by doing all this fracking everywhere. And as we could see when we look at the USGS, you know, it's, it's busy out there. <laughs> you know, to say the least, it's busy out there. And we have earthquakes all over the place. And again, what my eyes immediately drawn to is that U.S. West Coast. And look at all that activity going on. You know, it's, it's so intense over San Diego, you can't even see any of the map over there. And there we go, we're coming in. Now you can start to see. That's a lot of activity, my friends. Lots of activity. Of course, the stars are explosions. Could be mining going on, things along those lines. But there is a ton of activity. And, you know, this is all obviously building towards what we've been calling the big one. Uh, and we can see a lot of activity trailing up into the Yellowstone area as well. And a 3.8 off the coast of Oregon. And Alaska, as usual, tons of swarming going on there as well. And our biggest quakes right now are a 5.4 in Indonesia, very, very shallow. And then a 5.0 in Indonesia, pretty deep at 360 kilometers. So lots of activity going on as usual, and we're still just, we're just waiting. We know they're coming. We know the big ones are coming. This is curious, and I don't know what to make out of it, and I sent a uh, email off to Ryan, who lives right over there um, by Yellowstone itself. Strange things going on in Yellowstone. Here's two weird events captured during the last few days on the videos. So the video was shot April 21st. The rangers coming out of an emergency car bring a board over to an area where the ground is all stirred up. Then it shows them shining a flashlight onto something. Can't tell what it is. A backpack, a person on the ground. And then uh, do you see a light at the end of the video? What is that again? Similar to a rocket or a fireball? And the second footage looks like some close encounters of a third kind type of stuff. And then I don't know what this helicopter was looking for. So I'll have the link here. And I mean, the thing that I notice is kind of, I don't know if it's just dust kicking up. You know, there's 
they obviously set a flare which is obvious but there seems to be some something else kicking up I, I don't know if it's something on fire is it is it outgassing uh, of something is it you know what what is going on over there just a flare or a fire burning in the background you can see the flare in the foreground but I don't know it's just interesting stuff you know there's always in certain areas that you get unusual activity a lot of times you'll have more than one type of unusual activity like take take Mount Shasta for instance you know Mount Shasta you get a lot of Bigfoot sightings and, and you also get a lot of UFO sightings and then you've actually had recorded sightings of reptilian beings as well as Nordic beings that appear to be um, extraterrestrial or alien and so it's like are certain areas you know being scrutinized or used by non-human entities you know that's my question for you guys so I don't know what's going on with this with Yellowstone but you guys make your own decisions and check it out I'll fast forward towards the end here I mean it looks to me like uh, my question is what's all this too is this stuff burning or outgassing is it stuff coming up they don't call attention to that but that's curious to me and then you see kind of like puffs go flying out I don't know what to make of it and so you know again I'll leave these links for you guys to check it out and this is more of basically the same now Yellowstone as you know um, they've discovered the hot magna plume that was found more than 1800 miles underneath Yellowstone super volcano and I'll put the uh, links for this as well and um, it's just really the span of Yellowstone is just incredible because it extends out past Mexico past the border is it is this is an enormous you know potential for just this incredibly powerful event to happen here and um, down here this is a really good video um, it comes off the Smithsonian and uh, it gives you such a good explanation so if you guys got a chance check it out and uh, when we look at those numbers from Deagle would Yellowstone do it uh, yeah Yellowstone could do that and some of you have suggested that and the volcanic activity report let's just say it's busy <laughs> new activity you can see there's new activity going on in Indonesia the Philippines the Hawaiian Islands Japan Russia Papua New Guinea Chile Indonesia as we said you know it's so active over there and there's still ongoing activity at so many locations it's just um, it's just it's really busy my friends area farms are challenged by near record cold in April and as we've said this is all the obvious thing and wait till next year because it's going to be so much more intense especially with the cold and so we will be seeing that reflected in the food prices hence the the whole thing about being ready and starting to get yourself prepared to go ahead and you know grow your own food and have plans and get into a spot where you know you can make it work if, if at all possible and I know everybody's situation is different and we still have all the war bluster going on. We have the Iranian naval commander threatening to sink U.S. ships and create a catastrophic situation if Trump kills deal. And uh, the, there was also a call um, out there for all the Islamic nations to unite basically against the U.S. and against President Trump. Israel to strike any military foothold that Iran has in Syria really nothing new they've always felt that way and they've always done whatever they feel like doing frenemies at the table Kim and Moon to foster goodwill at historic meeting 
but Trump's shadow looms. And so they will be meeting on Friday, talking about possible reunification, perhaps. So we shall see. We shall see where this all goes. Now, I've seen this pop up in many places lately. What is this? Very, very interesting. So, I mean, some are calling it a giant angel. Some are saying it's Nibiru itself. Some are saying it's a huge UFO. And so this form has been seen in our solar system. And this is from April 22nd, so four days ago. It was taken from Lasco 3 in Maryland on April 22nd at 7.42 a.m. It shows what appears to be what some are calling an angel or a craft or an alien. To me, if it's real, it looks like the Egyptian motifs of Isis. Also made me think of the Bennu bird, known as the phoenix, who was the god, guide of the gods. And this is off hiddenInTheCrag.com. And, uh, yeah, I've seen this in numerous places recently. And when you're looking at the scale of this thing, it appears to be massive. 2.8 million kilometers across? What could that possibly be? Is this just a glitch? Is it a very, very curious glitch that it apparently looks just like the Wayne Cross that we see? And uh, the uh, Sumerian, the symbol of the Anunnaki, as well as, you know, Isis here and... Ra and uh, you know all these other gods that have appeared in this kind of form. So anyways this image is a trip. I did a little investigating. It looks like the sun at the time of the photo was near Pisces. This puts this image of whatever it is right next to Pisces. Note that Uranus is right behind it and funny enough there was an article that came out the following day about Uranus smelling like sulfur. I think you can figure out where they are going with that. Yeah, that was funny. So, basically the location of where it was. So what is really going on? And here's the context of the size of this thing compared to the Earth. Which, the Earth would be dwarfed by the size of this thing. So what is it? What is it? I mean... The universe that we live in is really, really quite unusual and probably wilder than we can ever imagine, my friends. So it gets you over to thinking about the Anunnaki, and there's that winged disc. So what is it? <laughs> what really is going on here? So here, this is Anunnaki.org. And it's talking about the Anunnaki being those of royal blood. They're believed to be immortal gods that inhabited the earth, as we know, during the ancient Sumerian time in Mesopotamia. And all, all of our mythologies from all over the world say there was a time when the gods were among us. And you know what? Your holy books, for the most part, if you are Judeo-Christian, they talk of a time when God comes back. And is right here and rules here on earth and it definitely looks to be a physical presence a visible physical presence so what is really really going on and what exactly is this God because Obviously, if it was something that took flesh, it wouldn't be necessarily the creator of everything. It's not source, you know, unless it's what we would call an avatar of source. And in some ways, perhaps we are all avatars of source. It's ourselves. So it's all very interesting. But it's so undeniable that we are, we are living in these amazing, amazing times. And one of the things that's interesting, too, is like the exact origins of the Sumerians are unknown. They came from the east, and I've read articles on this, and, and a lot of people try to say that they simply came from somewhere in Saudi Arabia, probably. And there's others that say other locations. Now, where in the east? You know, because... 
really east of Sumer is going to be heading towards India. And, you know, some haven't gone that far as saying that they came from India. Or perhaps even farther north and east than India. Perhaps they came from lands that have gotten sunken, like Lemuria and Mu. So, very, very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. And, you know, it's like I've spent 30 years <laughs> studying all this stuff and uh, read all of Sitchin's books, you know, and others as well. And uh, still I feel like we don't really know the whole truth. And some people might be convinced that they know exactly what's going on. And perhaps you are convinced if you've actually had a visit from one of these beings, as so many people have said they have, or have direct contact with them, perhaps through uh, the astral realm, or perhaps you know, you, you've experienced an abduction. So it's, it's all very, very interesting. And there's different points of view on these Anunnaki, like Enlil, Enki, Enu, all these, you know, beings, Marduk. Some view them as reptilians, and others say, no, 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 they're not reptilians, they're more like your Nords. They're depicted usually with these heavy beards, which is not typically what we see with the Nordic aliens. So who exactly are these beings? We know we have their DNA inside of us, according to all the legends. According to all the legends, their DNA is in us. So some of what we are is them. So it's very, very interesting. And so do you think that they are reptilians? Do you think the reptilians are different? Are the descendants of Enlil and Enki even on the earth anymore? Or are they have they gone? Have they left have they left? And did they, you know, leave simply other beings, like maybe perhaps the Gigi, or if we call them the Gigi, um, in charge? Or maybe they didn't leave anybody in charge, they just took off and some other beings like the GG the Gigi took over and uh, they are those ones that have been ruling us ever since the Illuminati and the Cabal and are they under the control of the reptilians there even seems to be two different factions of reptilians because really it, it, it seems like the Nagas that have been here we're here on earth already and perhaps they are the original beings uh, that were on this planet and it does seem like the the draco are different than the nagas if you really look at it and we see these images and art that clearly show reptilian type of beings suckling little ones with their breasts so that's kind of an interesting mammalian reptilian cross you got going there. So it, it's all really fascinating and it's very perplexing really to try to figure out exactly what is going on and who is who. So perhaps the Anunnaki like the Enlilites, the Enkiites, Marduk, etc., etc., perhaps they are coming back now. As we can see with this right here. And perhaps what that's what the holy books are pointing to, is the return of the gods, the gods that were really in charge. And perhaps what has been left on planet Earth is just an outpost of some rebel faction that's been using it for their own good and not really caring about anything else. So, all very interesting, all very strange, all very bizarre. What are we gonna experience in my lifetime, in your lifetime, my friends? What are we gonna experience? What do you guys think? 
We know we're heading out of the Kali Yuga. We know we're heading into a golden age. And we know a lot of the prophecies say that we're going to be led by the gods once again and taught how to bring in a better society, a golden age. And then many of them say that we will then join the greater cosmic society out there. For perhaps, you know, what has been in control of us is nothing but an outpost of self-serving rebels that do things their own way and don't care about anybody else. And perhaps we are going to get a new sheriff back in town that's going to stop that type of activity and work towards a better world here on Earth. What's your thoughts? Inquiring minds want to know, my friends. Let me know what you guys are thinking about all this. So leave a comment, share with us. As always, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Click the bell for updates and share with as many people as possible and give us a thumbs up if you found this informative and help support the channel. Much love and light to you guys always and thank you for being part of the Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Take care, my friends.